Hey everyone, if you've been enjoying my free math lessons on Prodigy Mathematics, I've got a great way you can support the channel and supercharge your learning. I've launched Martian Mathematics, a growing collection of problem sets, quizzes, and fully worked out solutions designed to complement my videos. These aren't just generic worksheets. Each set follows my lesson structure, reinforcing key concepts with carefully crafted problems and step-by-step -step solutions. Every purchase helps keep this channel running, so I can continue bringing you high-quality, free math education. Check out Martian Mathematics on Teachers Pay Teachers today. Your support makes all the difference. And don't forget to like and subscribe. Welcome back to Lecture 11, Addition and Subtraction of Decimals. So, what exactly does decimals mean? Does anyone know the meaning of decimal? Like what it derives from? Any guesses? No one? Well, it actually comes from Latin decimus, which means tenth, which comes from Greek deca, which means ten. And that's because we use a base 10 number system. Can anyone guess why we might use a base 10 number system? Any random guesses? I don't know what this means. What does that mean? No. Oh, it means no, you can't. Okay. How about now? Anyone have a good guess? Because we have 10 fingers. Because yeah, we have 10 fingers. Exactly. Exactly. So, you know, ultimately the origin of these things goes way back. But the 10 fingers is not like established in fact, but it's a good guess as to why. Just like uh, the 12 hours in a day, right? The Egyptians with their clocks, right? They had a counting system that was based on a 12, base 12 counting system. You know, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. And then, of course, the 60 minutes in an hour and 60 seconds in uh, a minute comes from the Sumerians who had a base 60 number system. And I wish we would have thought of it when we were doing fractions, but you can show why that's a good base, especially for fractions. Um, but decimal comes from 10, base 10. The common examples, you've seen decimals before, probably if you've ever seen money expressed on something like this, like $3.41, well, that's a decimal. If you're popular, if you're a fan of baseball, and maybe you see a batting average expressed as something like this, 0 0.177, that's a decimal too. Can anyone think of some examples of where they may have seen decimals? At the store, you mean for prices? Sure, yeah, that's money again. So decimal is pretty common. Another place you may have seen decimals in are in special numbers, like you may have heard of the number pi, which is approximately anyway, so I'll put a little funny equal sign that kind of means approximately equal to 3.14, and then there's a bunch of digits that keep on going forever, never repeating the same pattern twice. Um, it's a special kind of number called a transcendental number. We're not going to get into what that means, but pi is one of them. E is another one that you may have heard of. So when we write a number down, we remember that each digit has a place value. So for example, in the number 314, 4 is in the 1's place. 1 is in the tens place, and 3 is in the hundreds place. Yeah. But what if I change the number such that I make it into 3.14, kind of alluding back to the pi we talked about before. Now what's the place value? Well, 3 is the ones place still. So the number that appears immediately to the left of the decimal point, which is what we call the little dot here, is the ones place. That doesn't change. There's not like the equivalent of a ones place to the right of the decimal point because they both share that one. So what is this position here called? Anyone know? It's the tenths place. And the four, in this case, would be the hundredths place. Hundreds. How do we spell that? Hundredths. It's tough. The hundredths place. The next place value would be the one thousandths place. Notice the TH on the end of it, right? So it's, it's, that, that means must have something to do with the fraction, right? Because we did this with fractions when we said, you know, 1 over 8, we call it an eighth, right? And as it turns out, that's true. So a tenth, this means that we have one tenth. Four hundredths means that we have four over a hundred. That's what it means, okay? So decimals are a way for us to uh, express fractions. But it's all, unlike fractions, which have any, you can have any denominator in a fraction, right? We have an eighth or a ninth, but with decimal fractions, they're always a power of ten. So it's either a tenth, a hundredth, a thousandth, ten thousandths, a hundred thousandths, a millionth, right? 
Now we're not going to focus on the fraction relationship between the decimal and the fraction number today. Uh, we're going to take, take it slow and we're going to talk about adding and subtracting decimals. But I just wanted you to see what these things mean and you should be aware of the place value, right? So again, all you have to do is remember this is always the ones place. There's no such thing as a once place, okay? Because one over one is just one, right? So the first place value to the right is a tenth, a hundredth, a thousandth, etc. And it goes from left to right, unlike on the other side of the decimal point, it goes from right to left, right? So it's ones, tens, hundreds, you see? Yeah. All right, so now I want to talk about the rules for adding and subtracting decimals. And they're pretty simple. The first rule is that we have to line up the decimal points. So that means that if we're adding two decimals, we write them in a vertical fashion, just like we normally do, but we make sure we line up those decimal points. And I'll show you what I mean by that. We're going to try, we're going to look at the problem, 7.34 plus 2.61. So again, just like with addition of uh, whole numbers, we're going to do this in a vertical fashion. So we're going to write the first number, 7.34, we'll write it right here, 7.34. Now we're going to write 2.61, and we're going to put it directly beneath 7.34. And again, the rule to remember is line up the decimal points. So the, we'll write it like this, 2.61, and we're going to add those. Now from going forward from here, it's basically the same as it always was when adding numbers. What do I mean by that? Well, we'll add 4 plus 1 gives us 5, 6 plus 3 gives us 9, and 7 plus 2 gives us 9. And the decimal point will be directly below where it was in the problem. So the solution and the problem have the decimal points all lined up. If you do that, then you're going to be good. Okay? So let me give you one to try. This time it's a subtraction problem, but everything applies to what I said. Line up the decimal points, add or subtract as normal, and your solution, make sure the decimal point is lined up with the decimal point in the problem. Okay, so go ahead and pause the video and uh, try that now. So again, we'll write it in the vertical fashion, 15.86 minus 4.75. Lining up the decimal point, and then we just subtract. 6 minus 5 is 1, 8 minus 7 is 1. We'll write the decimal point. 5 minus 4 is 1, a lot of 1's here, and drop down, 1 minus 0 is 1. And so we get an answer of 11.11. .11. Of course, we're going to see carries and borrows in decimal addition and subtraction problems as well. So let's have a look at, it, at some of those. So 4.86 plus 3.92, of course, what's the first thing we do? We're not subtracting anything. Well, no, first thing we do is we write the problem vertically, aligning the decimal points. 4.86 plus 3.92. And then we add as usual. We can, actually, we can write the decimal point in here before we do anything if we want to. Personal choice, 6 plus 2 is 8. 9 plus 8. What is 9 plus 8? 17. 17, which means we need to carry the 1 from 17 over to the next digit and write the 7 here. The fact that the decimal point is there does not affect anything at all because, again, remember, each of these digits differ from each other by a power of 10. So carrying the 1 from 17 over to the next place is just fine, just like we did before. Now we do 4 plus 3 is 7, plus 1 more is 8, and we get our final answer, 8.78. Here is another subtraction problem. This time, it's going to require some borrowing. So let me let you try that at home. Pause the video. Come back when you have your answer. Do you have your answer already? Step one, write them in a vertical fashion, lining up the decimal points. We get 
5.16 minus 5.38. Then we're going to subtract 6, or if you subtract 8 from 6, well, can we do that? No, we need to borrow, right? So we're going to borrow from our neighbor over here, leaving this with 0, and carrying the 1 over here that we borrowed. What is 16 minus 8? 8. eight. Now I got to do 0 minus 3. Well, I can't do that, so I need to borrow yet again. And again, this time I'm borrowing across the decimal point, but that does not matter. It's the same as it usually is. So I'll borrow from the 4, reducing it to 3, making this 10. And what is 10 minus 3? 7. Seven. Decimal point. Now I do 3 minus 5. Well, I can't do that, so I need to borrow again. A lot of borrowing here. Borrow from our neighbor, making this 13 minus 5. What is 13 minus 5? 7, 8. 7, 8. Now it's 8. And then finally, 1 minus 0 is 1, and so we get our final answer of 18.78. All right, now I'm going to talk about some special cases that might throw you off. And the first thing to consider is a, kind of where we have dangling numbers. So what do I mean by that? Really, dangling digits, I guess, would be a better way to say that. So let's consider the problem 12.5 plus 6.203. So here we've got, why, why do I say dangling digits? Well, I'll show you. Because if I write this vertically, I'll write 12.5, then I'll write 6.203. And you see how 6.203 has the zero and the three digits just kind of dangling over the edge there? There's nothing above it, right? Yeah. And you can think of this as not being much different. In fact, it's exactly the same as the, the little dangling bit on the left here, right? We've seen that before. Right, where we know that when we're adding this digit here, it's going to be 1 plus 0. We don't really need to write the 0, but we can if it helps. And so what I suggest doing, if you're confused by this, is go ahead and write in a 0 here and here. You'll especially want to do this when subtracting. Okay. Um, now we can do the problem as usual. 3 plus 0 is 3. 0 plus 0 is 0. 5 plus 2 is 7. 6 plus 2 is 8. And 1 plus 0 is 1. And we get our final answer of 18.703. Where do people go wrong with this? Sometimes they'll try to line it up, right? Uh, in this case, it would not uh, be a problem so much, but what if it was something like this, 6.20 and 12.5, they might try to do this. You see that? Yeah. Try to line the numbers up, but this is no, right? This violated our rule about aligning the decimal points, right? So make sure you align those decimal points when setting these problems up. Uh, let me give you one to try. So here's another problem that's going to have some dangling digits. So go ahead and try that at home. Uh, pause the video, come back when you have your answer. No problem, as long as we line these decimal points up correctly. 9.502 plus... 3.16, and if we want to, we can fill in a zero underneath there if that helps us out. But as long as we have these decimal points aligned, we're going to be okay, I think. So 2 plus 0 is 2, 0 plus 6 is 6, 5 plus 1 is 6, decimal point 9 plus 3 is 12, and we have our final answer, 12.662. So what other problems might we uh, run into? Another one is, what if we have a whole number plus a decimal? So, 4 plus 3.76. So what do we do in a case like this? Well, it's a lot like when we were doing fractions and we might have a whole number that we're adding to a fraction. We have to remember that we can rewrite that number as a fraction by simply putting it over a denominator of 1. Here, all we have to do is just add a decimal point to it. This is four ones, which means that we're going to write it like this. Four point, and if you want to put a zero or two after it, you can. So we'll rewrite four as 4.00. And then we'll add to that 3.76, and now everything works out exactly as before. 0 plus 6 is 6, 0 plus 7 is 7, 4 plus 3 is 7, we get a final answer of 7.76. Maybe I should have made that 14 plus 3.76, and then we would have 1776, the year of the founding of the United States of America. Didn't think of that when I made this problem. So let's look at a dangling digit problem that involves subtraction and see where we run into trouble there. I think this is where you really do need to write the zeros in, okay? But let me set the problem up first, and then we'll see why. So here I'm writing it vertically, aligning the decimal points. And you see that whenever I 
go up here and subtract 0 minus 5, it's not immediately clear to me. Oh, I need to put a minus there, huh? It's not immediately clear to me what I need to do because I don't have any digits up here. So it's best to write in the zeros when doing subtraction here, uh, even though it won't really matter for addition, but for subtraction, I think you need to do it. Because now when I borrow, I'm going to borrow from my neighbor who has nothing, right? Which means I have to borrow from his neighbor. So we'll give him 10, but we're going to take away one because we're going to borrow from over here, making this 9, right? And so now I have 10 minus 5 is 5. 9 minus 2 is 7. 0 minus 0 is 0. Uh, 2 minus 6, well, we need to borrow again. So we'll borrow from here. 12 minus 6 is 6. And so we get our final answer of 6.075. Okay. Let me give you one to try. Twenty five point one minus nine point eight seven six. So go ahead and try that at home. Pause the video, come back when you've got it. So as you can see, this is another one of these dangling digit problems. And I suggest, well, you really need to, you need to write these zeros in above the seven, above the six because we're going to need to borrow, because 0 minus 6 just doesn't work, so we're going to again borrow from our neighbor, uh, making this a 10 minus 6, but this neighbor doesn't have anything to borrow from, so we'll have to borrow from here, making that a 0, making this not, uh, not a 10, but a 9. 10 minus 6 is 4. 9 minus 7 is 2. Now 0 minus 8, we have to borrow again, making that 4. 10 minus 8 is 2, decimal point. We have to borrow yet again. 14 minus 9? Who, who knows 14 minus 9? Five. And 1 minus 0 is 1. So in our final answer of 15.224. So not so bad, right? Better than you thought? Do so you think fractions are worse than decimal problems? Yeah. Okay. A little harder to work with. Um, I guess to kind of reiterate the important points here, remember to line up the, the digits by their decimal point. That decimal point should be lined up when you do the addition and subtraction. And don't be afraid to write in zeros if you need to. Uh, when you're doing a subtraction problem, you're probably going to need those zeros because you might have to uh, do some borrowing and the zeros are kind of necessary for that. Uh, but in general, just don't hesitate to add zeros in where it's convenient. And uh, that's pretty much it. Yeah, next time we'll talk about multiplying decimals. Okay, see you then.